welcome to Wrestling Backlash. Is he the salt of the earth, or is he your scumbag? In the world of professional wrestling, the line between hero and villain is often blurred, with complex characters evolving in response to audience reactions. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, better known as MJF, has masterfully navigated this terrain, transforming in just a few short years from the wrestling world's top heel to a beloved scumbag in the hearts of fans. His journey marked by a unique blend of charisma, authenticity, and a willingness to push boundaries that nobody else would travel with limit. From a devastatingly sharp wit to a level of arrogance that can be beautifully summed up in one Burberry scarf, stick around as we dive into the mind and career of the AEW world champion himself and show you why MJF is better than you and you know it. MJF's on-screen persona has largely been that of an arrogant, condescending, and affluent provocateur. He dons a signature Burberry scarf, calls people pores, and never hesitates to declare, I'm better than you, and you know it. Parents bring their children to gleefully be insulted by him. Fans wait in line for him to scowl in photos and call them names. And people deliberately troll him and bring him homemade gifts to ruin. In one video, after he drops a fan's autograph sheet and storms off, the fan yells out, that's better than an autograph, bro. You're the man. His relentless insults and provocations over the years have made him one of the most controversial. So allow me to give you some advice from a real top guy. Figures in wrestling, a role he's embraced wholeheartedly. He even proudly hails from Long Island, a fact that has only added to his heel persona. If we were to go through every viral or controversial thing MJF has done, we'd be here all day. But here's a few which stuck out. When he was just five years old, a tape of him singing You Are My Sunshine landed him a guest spot on the Rosie O'Donnell show, where he already showed signs of the persona we see in the ring today. He's insulted basically everyone on TV and associated. From Darby Allen dead uncle to Brian Pillman Jr.'s family. He threw a drink in a kid's face in front of his mother at a live show. One for Max. Yeah. What was going through your mind throwing the drink on the kid? Kid looked thirsty. What's the second question? You get the point. But where does his story begin? He his wrestling skills at the Create Pro Training School under the guidance of former WWE superstar Brian Myers, also known as Kurt Hawkins and Pat Buck, who later joined AEW in a similar role. He wrestled under a variety of names, from Pete Lightning and Sandy Bunker to Maxwell Jacob Feinstein, before he adopted the MJF persona, working the independent scene with organizations like CZW, Combat Zone Wrestling. Maxwell even attempted to enter WWE's Tough Enough in 2015. He submitted an audition video video on YouTube as part of WWE's talent search for the show, in a clip that's often memed in reference to this day. To this day, I just have a feeling that I might have rubbed certain people the wrong way, MJF said, addressing Triple H directly as Trip and questioning whether he's smart enough to know he's looking at the future of WWE. MJF also signs off with his Better Than You and You Know It line a full four years before he would use it in the AEW. Though the closest he'd come to working for WWE was in enhancement roles, notably serving as a body double for Finn Balor's demon gimmick paint rehearsals and a security guard backstage at NXT, where he was shoved into the wall by Samoa Joe in a viral clip from 2016 that would lead to a feud between the two in AEW this past month. Soon after joining the reinstated Major League Wrestling, MLW, he became their first ever world middleweight champion, and later went on to lead a faction known as the Dynasty. MJF, alongside Richard Holiday and Alexander Hammerstone, engaged in memorable feuds against the Hart Foundation, which featured Teddy Hart, Davey Boy Smith Jr., and Brian Pillman Jr., and then came AEW. MJF made his AEW debut as an original signee at the inaugural event, Double or Nothing 2019. His arrival immediately turned heads due to his brash attitude and unique charisma, making it clear that he was destined to become one of the promotion's future stars. Feuds with Cody Rhodes, Chris Jericho, and more quickly proved this. MJF's epic feud with CM Punk spanning late 2021, early 2022 was a defining chapter in his AEW career. It began with personal jabs and evolved into a heated rivalry that showcased MJF's storytelling prowess. MJF wasted no time in taking shots at CM Punk, dubbing him PG Punk since his return, and mocking Punk's unsuccessful stint in UFC. Punk fired back with his own verbal assaults, referring to MJF as a less famous Miz, and labeling him My Jealous Fan. The verbal sparring between the two hugely engaged fans. Their animosity and tension had been simmering 
recovering for months, and it all came down to a head on the February 2nd, 2022 episode of Dynamite. In a great show of faith in the young star, MJF became the first person to defeat CM Punk in AEW, and it happened in Punk's hometown of Chicago, with the help of MJF's longtime crony, Wardlow. Things culminated in a brutal dog collar match, as Punk got his revenge, this time being helped by Wardlow after turning on Friedman. This feud is widely known as one of, if not the greatest feud in AEW history, and it was crucial in propelling MJF to new heights, as both truly brought out the best in each other. Tensions behind the scenes soon rose, though. During the Double or Nothing weekend of May, MJF legitimately no-showed at FanFest, and then at AEW Double or Nothing, he arrived just before his match against Wardlow and left immediately after. This came after months of rumors about the backstage tension between MJF and AEW owner Tony Khan about MJF's contract and payment he felt he should have, as well as having done an interview with Ariel Hawani without telling management. On the June 1st episode of Dynamite, MJF cut a work to shoot promo about not being respected by the fans in Khan, ending with MJF demanding to be fired by Khan, calling him a his microphone being cut off, quickly fading to commercial, and the commentators not referencing the situation after the break. The next day, his profile was removed from AEW's website, and his merchandise was pulled on AEW's merchandise site as part of the storyline. Though since, the genuine issues between Maxwell and the company have been resolved. After a big return months later, at Full Gear 2022, MJF defeated Moxley after using William Regal's signature brass knuckles to become the youngest AEW world champion in the history of the company. With the dawn of the MJF era, he delved deeper into his villainous persona, fully embracing his devil gimmick. So far, he's defended against all comers, including an overtime Iron Man match victory against Brian Danielson, which received excellent critical acclaim and a fatal four-way ladder match including all four AEW pillars, MJF, Sammy Guevara, Jack Perry, and Darby Allin. In the summer of 2023, a rivalry with Adam Cole immediately intrigued fans, but when they were forced to team together for an AEW Tag Titles tournament, something started to change. Fans embraced their reluctant camaraderie as multiple hilarious segments saw MJF showcase a more open side of him that we'd never really seen much of, or at least believed before. He became genuinely eager to impress Cole. The team of Better Than You, Bebe was created and became incredibly over as Cole's influence prompted MJF to take risks and gain fan support. This transformation was authentic, rooted in MJF's past and real experiences. When Adam Cole showed genuine care, it altered MJF's perspective on the person he could become. In an interview with The Ringer, MJF emphasized the importance of being a real person in the world of wrestling, stating, What's lacking on national TV? Hell, what's lacking in reality? Are real people. Before adding, The only person who's just being me, and I'm being myself unapologetically. With a declaration of, I'm your scumbag, marking his slow but successful successful transition into AEW's biggest babyface, Better Than You Baby opened and headlined all in 2023 at Wembley Stadium in London. MJF said this, I was just in the biggest main event in the history of wrestling. This is a very hyperbolic sport filled with hyper people that will make claims like that. For crying out loud, I think Hulk Hogan recently said he was in Japan and America on the same day somehow. Great guy. I can say that earnestly and honestly to you guys, and it's not hyperbole. The fact that I can say that feels right. We're not just an alternative. We're a gang of misfit toys of guys that should have never was. Guys that never should be in the position they're in today. The fact of the matter is, we are misfits. But guess what? We come together and put on the best professional wrestling shows this world has ever seen. I put my name on that. You want to know why I put my name on that? Because I'm ready to step I'm ready to be the face of this company. I'm ready to be the face of the mayhem of the misfits as long as this is up the money. Whether you call him the salt of the earth, the devil, or your scumbag, MJF is proving more every day that he truly is the generational talent he describes himself as, and showing that there's no limitations to where he can go in the industry. He's a true throwback to wrestling icons of yesteryear, evoking memories of legends like Roddy Piper. As for how long he'll stay our beloved scumbag, or perhaps revert to his old ways, well, in the unpredictable world of professional wrestling, only time will tell.